Hello and to the final part of Hot Wheels Cyber Racing. This time we're going to look through all the bonus tracks I'm calling that we have gotten from the fucking second cup. Cause they never fucking use them in a cup and we might as well look at them right now to see if they're good. These actually might be the levels that were added for the PS1 version and not in the X64 version. In fact, some of these cars might be the same thing, like the Twin Mill and such. So, the Twin Mill is actually in the N64 version. Anyway, there was new shit added to the PS1 version because of the N64 version, so this might be it. And this level is pretty tropical. It looks neat. Uh, it... These, these levels actually, uh, except for one of them, look okay. They don't... This one doesn't make much sense in a lot of ways. The way the layout is, is pretty... Ugh. It's pretty stupid, but... The design is nice. It looks neat. And for that, it's one of the better looking levels of the game. That being said, that is not much of an improvement. That is not making me like this game any much more. Especially since this game has been shit for quite a bit. And that's not changing in any way because the design of this level, the way the layout is, is just awkward and silly and I fucking hate it. But it looks neat because this tropical jungle-ish area of the fucking volcano and such looks kind of cool. For PS1, it looks kind of cool. I just wish it was done better. But I know it won't because Turbo Racing is a pile of fuck. Also, this is four laps, not six. I can't change the laps. So the very fact this is four laps, while well, every other fucking track so far has been six, makes me question why I couldn't just have four laps at least. Why did it have to be fucking six? Fucking idiots, man. Doesn't matter much because I'm just showing off these levels. There's no secret cars here either. There are no secrets here to find. And by the way, that's another thing I'm going to go through. I'm going to go and get every secret car. Even though we already did, because I beat the Twin Milk Cup. They gave me every sec single fucking secret car in the game for beating the cup. So finding them is worthless. But I might as well try. And by the way, I thought if because I didn't see a check, I didn't see a checkpoint over there. There is. But I thought if I skip that bullshit and go for the checkpoint over here, I would do that trick I was doing beforehand, in which I would just skip a whole bunch of backtracking. No, because then I get that noise and I have to reset the race. So, I'm just going to jump cut to where I am actually back over here, and I've got the checkpoint now, and I actually just got the maximum turbo in one trick. Ten turbos is maximum. But I can do this, I can skip, I can skip going around in a circle. It's sort of fast to doing that. In fact, there is a trick that could actually make the, miss a fucking great trick to uh, get through a time trial sort of thing really fast. Except this game doesn't have a time trial really. Well, it sort of does, has the best lap, but that's not much. Also, big drop. And now I am fourth. Don't worry, I will get first. I'm getting first for every track. Because I am good at video games. And yeah, Flippin' Dizzy is 10 turbo. So, 
that is actually really fucking amazing to see that I can get max turbo for doing a total of four to five flips and spins. And also, that just happened. And it counted, and I got to out of it. What? So yeah, this is this track, and this track is just sort of design-wise neat, but track design-wise sucks. And that's no surprise to me. And it wasn't really fun to actually go through, and it didn't make a whole lot of sense in some parts. But it looked neat. It looked like it had a lot to it. It was like the other levels where it was just like, sort of had some stuff to it, kind of thrown in, didn't really have much of a personality, kind of, kind of was kind of bland in a way, and just sucked. This has some personality to it, at least. That is a lot to say. And by the way, I exploded. An explosive finish, to say the least. So that's the first track. There are three. The second track is very short. That was exhaust pipes. Now time for Serpent Sprint. This is extremely fucking short. In fact, this is the shortest track in the entire game, in my opinion. And you're about to find out why. Right now, though, let's have a look at the little intro they give you for this level. Oh, look at that face. Look at those eyes. This is the best looking start ever. For this fucking game, at least. Three, two, one, go! And that just happened. So, got a hammer immediately. Uh, got this big fucking turn here. Has a turbo here. I can take that. This has very little jumps. But, like I said, it's the shortest fucking track of, track of the game. And again, it's very jungle. It's very tribish. And... All three of these... Are basically that. They are this jungle, tribish, and in a way, in the third one, prehistoric sort of tracks. They have a personality, and they have no purpose in the game. You can play them, and they're, they're sort of fun. This one, I believe, is the most well-made of them, especially that secret. That secret, even though it has a bit of a, a sheenness to it, it's pretty decent. You can get in there, no problem, and it's fucking great. This is, in my opinion, the best track. The shortcuts are well-defined, and you can easily get into them without losing a whole lot of speed. The track layout, the way it's done, is simple, but it works. And the way it looks just looks nice. Going into the snake mouth and such, very cool. So, yeah, this, to me, is the best track of all of turbo racing because every other track has a fucking problem it's either bland as shit or its layout is fucking terrible this is the best out of all of them and its layout is a simple fucking it's like a, a basic fucking sort of track you know, you have like two straight lines, and you have like this big long turn on the ends of them. That is this. Every racing game has a track like this, but this one sort of has a bit of a difference to it in a way, but it's still the same bullshit. It's still fucking easy as shit. Still basic. And yet, it's the best one out of them all. Serpent Sprint, best track. Now for Volcano Blowout, the final, the last bonus track of the PS1 version of this game.
And it makes no fucking sense. I hope you're ready for it. Because I wasn't. I wasn't when I fucking played for this. I was like, what? Get ready. Get ready. It's going to make no sense. Yeah, that looks neat. Nice intro. Right in here. And there we go. Now, first you choose your path. Okay, that's kind of cool. Then you go over here, there's a whole bunch of paths. You go right, it's kind of awkward. You go this way, and you decide to go inside this mouth. And then, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? What, how the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? I did not get that, and I didn't find it useful because everyone else was in front of me right afterwards. Sure, there were three turbos there, but it's not good enough when everyone else is... You're already fit by the time you take that fucking volcano area. No. Not good enough. And you got that fucking thing, and you got this fucking drop here, which gives you a whole lot of speed for stunts even though it's not really a jump, and that's it. Then you go the other direction, you find there was a secret here, you go to the secret, and it's basically like an easier way of going left. And giving you like a bit of a height for stunts. That's it. It's really not that diff different, and it's really not that interesting. In fact, this track sucks. It is just stupid. It's not well designed. It looks like they tried to do something sort of fucking cool looking and such. But it just comes out looking fucking retarded. And really not fun to drive around in. And having very pointless areas that waste your time. Rather than actually, you know, be worth using or going through. Especially the CPU. The CPU never fucking go for that volcano area as far as I know. That volcano area is just worthless. Again, you get free turbo out of that from the top there if you can hit them. But you don't need them. They're worthless. And the area makes no fucking sense in its design. I'm fucking floating around for no fucking reason. I took the fucking bubbles from the goddamn area and Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. What the fuck just happened there? Busy lifting drinks. What the fuck? But yeah, it, this level makes no fucking sense. And again, it, it showcases that these levels are not well designed. And they suck, and for this game, that, that's a fucking problem. And it's why Serpent Sprint is like, to me, the best fucking track out of all of this game. This game cannot do a good fucking track, and yet it did Serpent Sprint. And that's it. That is the only good track. And that is all the tracks. That is basically the entire game at this point. Except now, now I'm showing you a mode. Because you've seen the tracks you've unlocked that we could we didn't do it all. Now I'm showing you this. Airtime challenge. What the fuck is airtime challenge? And while I'm at it, we're also going to go ahead and gain the secret cards. We're going to be looking through all the locations where the secret cards are. And we're getting each one one by one. So all the mystery cars, all the secret cars, we're getting them. We're getting all of them, even though we already have them unlocked. Three, but what the fuck is their time challenge? One, well, it's score mode. Basically, all you have to do is do stunts. 
and they give you a set amount of points. And all you have to do is get a high score. There's no set score. There's no bonus. No reward for doing every level in this mode and having a score for it. There's no challenge. It's an optional mode for you to have a score here to, you know, challenge your friends at. To showcase how big your dick is. That's about it. Now then, here's one secret car. Here's one mystery car. It's right here in this area, right behind me. There you go. Now, the other mystery car, the other secret car, it's... How should I say this? It's in an area where you wouldn't think it would be. You see, video games do do this, where they have a secret area in this one spot, like it's hidden behind this one thing, and here's the thing, they usually give you a hint. They usually make it pretty straightforward. This game does not. It looks solid as fuck, looks like you can't really get in there. Ladies and gentlemen, they put a secret in this waterfall right here. And in order to get it, I have to just get in the right spot of this waterfall at a slow speed. The problem is that it acts awkward and it's hard to aim for it. But once you do, there you go. And that's it. It's really not worth it. Like, it really isn't. It's sort of faster to just go the normal route because then you can get some turbo out of it. And you can like turbo through the whole turn. That's pretty much faster than hitting the fucking nothing that's there. But, yeah, that's that's about it. That is all secret cars in the fucking game for this level. But, now it's time to just do the airtime challenge. Now it's time to showcase this to its fullest. I will stop showing this challenge when I hit 10,000. Which is in the next race, because I didn't get fucking 10k, sadly, in this one. And that sucks. But I got close. But I'm not stopping this challenge until I get 10k. So, I'll be doing that in the next track, in which we'll find some more mystery cars. And the next track is called... Snake River Mine. So, we're going to Snake River Mine now. We're going to be going ahead, we're going to be getting the fucking... I just need to hear that a bit. You know, just... I like hearing him say Twin Mill. It sounds so good. Now, here's something interesting that I've never seen before until now. Turbo. Turbo backwards for a quick turnaround. I want to test this out because the game never hints you can do this. Never tells us you can do this. But now it's telling me in the bonus little mode. Fucking wow. Now... Is that going to be useful for me at any point? I have no fucking idea. But I do have one idea for you. And that is... There is no point to going through checkpoints or going through finish lines here. There is no fucking point. You can go backwards if you want and get scored that way. But right now, first secret car is right here on these tracks. There's like a cart here, and it will destroy me if it touches me, so I can't let it. But, secret car is to my right on this track here in the middle. Go get it. And then get out of the way before you get destroyed. And the se second secret car is actually in that one little area where we went up to like the right of a hill after a jump right over here and then we go through a whole track through a roof and such this area yeah it's right behind me now in the original in the SC4 version it's just right behind you it's right fucking there 
in the PS1 version, there's like a little gap there that like you just saw right there, and it's right there. So they, they kind of changed the positioning of where this mystery car is in the PS1 version. Not a huge change. It's in the same area. But you can't just get it from reversing. You have to go left a bit into a little compartment area and get it there. And also, alley -oop. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself a good amount of score. And by the way, by the way, there is another path below me. That 4x4 only sign down there, that is not a path. Why am I not going in there? I don't really want to. You fucking go do it. It's not useful really. So I'm not bothering. But if you are so interested on the rest of this level, which I don't know why I would be interested in this fucking game, then like, go. Go play the game yourself on SC4 or PS1 and fucking see the bit of the track yourself. Okay? Because I'm not showing you it. I'm showing you the important shit, which is car mystery car locations and the airtime challenge. Which I'm done with now because I got my 10k. So now, now I'm going to finish this bullshit by showing every location of these cars. Even though just being to a mole cup would give you them anyway, might as well. Road to Rustwell. First of all, this fucking shortcut here. I finally got in and there's the mystery car right fucking there. And not only that, but I'm also going to show you the middle path here. Because I, I want to know what was in here, and this is it. That's it. Not much, waste of time, fuck off. Now, that tornado as well, might as well have a look at that, hurricane. There you go. That's it. Now, the second suit car. It's actually to my left here. Go around that ramp to your left. There's a breakable wall, break through it, car's right behind it. There you go. And that's it, that's this level, that's the stage. Now, now it's time to go and do Cold Fusion. Cold Fusion has one at the very start, it's right here in this path. Go here and then stay to the left, just keep riding the left, keep riding the left wall until it breaks. Then go inside and you'll find a mystery car in ice. That's the first one. The second one is in that other shortcut area that I went through twice. And the car is actually right there. And that's it. Now it's time for command center. This one has a short this one has a fucking car that sucks. This one's easy, it's Another breakable wall, go through here, go through the path, cars to your right at the end, grab it, done. This one, however, has a problem. By the way, I'm going to make this little skip here. You can skip that little bit there. There's your skip. There you go. This jump here is bullshit to me a few tries. I had to restart the fucking race in order to get this. But if you can get the jump just right, with the right speed and such, then you got it. Armed Sludge Works is actually the last one for us, because I got the other cars beforehand in the Let's Play. There's one car right in that little area, just right on the side, and the last mystery car is right over here. Breakable wall, go inside, cars right here, shortcut area. There you go. That is every mystery car. Except one. Pay attention. Except one. This mystery car that I'm about to show you can only be gotten by inputting a cheat code. You cannot get this car outside this password. I am now going to show you the password. This, ladies and gentlemen, 
is the password for Toe Jam. The final car. T-W-J Toe Jam. There you go. Now go into cars and you will find it right above Twin Mill. Toe Jam! There you go. It sucks. That's all the cars, everybody! That is everything of Hot Wheels Turbo Fuck Off Racing. Twin I love you, Twin... I love you, Twin Mill. I love your fucking way of being said. And this guy that keeps saying these fucking car names is awesome. Okay? Great fucking voice. Great shit, man. But it does not save this game. I hate this fucking game. And now I have to bring out the elephant in the fucking room. The most controversial video I have made on this channel that isn't a removed video right now that one in the past, no. Thank you, thank you so much for that little saying. Anyway, the most controversial is beat that, the final part of it. Because I beat the shit out of that fucking game at the end. I still think beat that sucks. But it is far fucking better than Turbo Racing. Hot Wheels Turbo Racing is the worst fucking game of Hot Wheels I have ever played in my fucking life. I have not played a single Hot Wheels game that is this shit. That is this cheap. That is this short. That is this Fucking poorly made. And usually the problem with Hot Wheels games is two problems. Either it's too fucking short, which Stunt Track Challenge was sort of that, even though I liked that. Or it's too fucking repetitive. And Extreme Racing and Beat That were that. They were extremely fucking repetitive. I like Stunt Track Challenge, even though it's short. Because it wasn't repetitive as shit. And it was fun. And it was unique in every way. Extreme Racing was repetitive as fuck. But it had some fun to it. It had some uniqueness to it. And I liked it. I liked the fact you can be a boat and a plane as well as a car. I liked that because that was the sort of thing that got me into RC Revenge. And I liked that bullshit as well. Oh my god, they have Primus. They have fucking Primus in this fucking game. And yet this game sucks. God. But this game, this game was short, was not repetitive, but it was shit. The controls were fucked. The tracks were poorly made. So much of this game was garbage. And I fucking help. I fucking hate it. They have Mixmaster Mike? Really? They have Beastie Boy motherfucker Mixmaster Mike? What the fuck? They have decent music from fucking great musicians and DJs and shit. And yet they couldn't make a good fucking game. And this is the better version. N64 is the worst version. Because it has repetitive fucking music. As well as less content. Just. Think about that for a second. Okay. Beat that. Was shit. It was repetitive. And it was boring. And it was stupid. 
but some of the track designs were neat. The cars looked fine. The cars weren't complete crap sometimes. And the challenges were at least neat. This game doesn't have that. This is if Beat That was done much fucking worse. If this game started repeating tracks more than just one time in that one cup, I would have broken the fucking disc if I had it. I wouldn't have broken the fucking disc in half. But I don't have it. But that's it. That was Hot Bulls Turbo Racing. And you know what? I want to do Neptunia next, but no. Next time, I want to do a Tony Hawk game. We're doing that again. We're doing Underground. Fuck this. I want a good fucking game after this piece of fuck. Thanks for watching. See you in Underground.